control is a way to compensate for disturbances before they cause a deviation from the set point. We're going to design a feed forward controller for this temperature control lab and uh, first of all model the disturbance and then use that model to help us come up with a feed forward gain for our controller. Here's the link and if you select that you'll get the source code and be able to follow along with some of the uh, background uh, material. Okay, so we want to add a feed forward trim to a PID controller. We always add feed forward uh, to an already existing feedback loop. In this case, we have the PID controller in place. We want to reject temperature disturbances from heater 2. And we're going to test the performance with uh, temperature one set point from ambient to 40 degrees Celsius and then we'll have the heater two turn on at 200 seconds and then uh, turn off at 400 seconds. All right, let's uh, dig into the details here. We've got uh, first of all the PID equation. Let's go ahead and just review this one. We have our proportional term. We have the integral term and finally the derivative term and then this additional term here in blue that is our feed forward term okay so feed forward means that we measure disturbance and then we compensate for it and we have this feed forward gain uh, that we use to um, take the temperature to and if it increases or decrease we're going to either increase or decrease Q1 so if temperature 2 increases we want Q1 to decrease so in our case K feed forward should be negative the way that you come up with a good uh, feed forward gain is you look at the disturbance gain divided by the process gain and don't forget this negative sign right there so first of all, what we need to do is come up with our disturbance gain for the system to get to the relationship between temperature 2 and temperature 1. What we want to do is determine um, the delta temperature 1 divided by uh, the delta of temperature 2. So how much the temperature 1 is going to change. So in the uh, KP, if you remember that, that was uh, delta Y divided by delta U and uh, that is going to be in this case KD is the same thing but it's delta Y uh, delta Y divided by delta disturbance in this case the disturbance is going to be temperature 2 so we need to come up with that by a step change in the heater 2 to be able to get a change in temperature 2 and we'll see what happens uh, with temperature 1 so there's some code here in uh, to determine the disturbance gain if you go down and just run it uh, you'll be able to get a plot that will show you uh, it'll go for about 10 minutes I'll just go ahead and show you what I got here I won't run that for 10 minutes but here it is um, I have uh, the measured temperature 2 so this was uh, the level at about you know 62 to 63 degrees Celsius and then temperature 1 got up to about 35 degrees Celsius so we look at this change right here divided by the uh, the Delta y divided by delta d okay so um, that is going to be about 0.3 so it means that if you have a one degree temperature increase in temperature 2 it makes about a 0.3 increase in temperature 1 alright so I have here about uh, 0 0.3 and then for my KP from what we determined before that was about 0 0.9 so my K feed forward is going to be 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.9 or about uh, negative 0 
All right, so that is going to be our feed forward gain. So what we're going to do is plug that in here in the PID equation. And uh, we'll be monitoring temperature 2, the change in temperature 2. And we'll be compensating the, on the heater value uh, based on that, on that change. All right, we have a simulator as well just to help us verify what's going to happen. But I'm going to get this started first of all just because it's going to take just a little bit of time. Let's go down to our uh, PID control validation here and just grab this code and then we can run it. Um, all right, it's a little bit long and just select the get code. In the bottom it turns into just a text uh, format and then I am going to just create a new script. All right, and uh, this one is going to be PID uh, feed forward, and that will be dot .py. All right, so I'll put that into this file. It's just a text file, and save it. And then let's update before we run it. We're going to just update this with our parameters. Maybe KC is 10. Tau I 50, we'll just leave Tau D at 2, and then let's put this at negative 0 0.33. All right, we'll go ahead and run it, and then we'll use a simulator to see what should happen with this response. Let's just make sure it uh, starts okay here. All right, and uh, here it goes, and we'll have an animated plot. You won't be able to run this in Jupyter Notebook without some modification, uh, but we're going to start off with our set point, and then we'll change the set point. Now, um, it looks like I got an error message here. It just exceeded the maximum time. You're supposed to be one second. For some reason, it took just a little bit longer there. So if your computer's uh, being slow, it might have some error messages like that. If occasional one isn't a problem. All right, so there is our heater one turning on, and then at 200 seconds, Q2 is going to turn on as well. That's going to be our disturbance. So um, let's go back and just take a look at the simulator. I'm going to minimize these, let them keep running, and then come back here to the web page, and let's grab the simulator code. And um, so I'll just grab this here uh, and again get code. In this case I'll run this in a Jupyter Notebook. I'll get the code and start Jupyter Notebook. Alright and uh, once Jupyter Notebook starts I'll go ahead and just select desktop new Python 3 file and then once this comes up, I'll paste it in to one of the cells and run it. Okay, so here is our simulator. And you can see, like before, if you adjust the gain up or down, it's just going to change the plot. And then I have here an integral absolute error. So we're seeing how well this performs. Uh, right now we have no feed forward gain. So I'm going to just uh, decrease this down to 50. Uh, okay, so those were the two that we had. And then tau D is going to be 2. All right, so you can see already it's a very good uh, integral absolute error. You can see a little bit of deviation from you know temperature 2. For the most part, the feedback controller does a really good job of um, of compensating for that, but let's just add the feed forward and just see if we get a little bit better answer with that. So I'm going to go back to negative 0.3, and so um, let's see how much did that drop? 613 versus uh, when it's zero and we have no feed forward, it goes 664. Okay, so let's go do that again. Uh, okay, if I do negative 0 0.3, gets down to 613. So a little bit better. You can see that it uh, effectively eliminated a lot of these disturbances 
right around the set point. So even though temperature two is changing, we didn't have a lot of uh, deviation from the set point. It saw that that was changing and it knew that it needed to drop. You can see the effect of the feed forward here. This would be steady for the most part, but you can see it dropped the heater value right along here and then increased it again when that uh, temperature to effect was starting to go away. All right, let's just see how this is doing. Um, I'm just going to bring up the plot. Okay, and this should be fairly similar uh, to what we're predicting. All right, I'll make that just a little bit smaller so we can see it. One of the things that we don't have uh, modeled, well, I guess it, it has an okay model here, that rise in temperature due to uh, temperature one, temperature two will already start to rise even though the heater value is off. And that's again because of the effect of one heater next to the other. And you can see that also here in the data that that is also increasing. Now you can see that we expect this heater two to get up to about 53 degrees before it's going to start uh, dropping down. And again, that is because of the uh, rise in heater two output. Okay, just for this segment right here, heater two is uh, going to increase and then drop again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it at this point and then let this run a little bit longer um, and then I'll unpause it uh, near the end. Okay, it's just finishing up here. We see that, in fact, it is looking a lot like the simulation here. Uh, the Let's just compare what it did here on the heater value. You can see it come up. Uh, there's a little bit more chatter noise in this. That is from uh, the, uh, the, the measurement noise. And you have a derivative term there that amplifies that measurement noise because we have this finite difference for the derivative approximation. But otherwise, it looks fairly similar. It's coming down um, maybe just a little bit later than uh, it expected here. Uh, I had to put a little bit more heat in. Uh, but you see that it rejects those disturbances from temperature two. And you can see it brings down the Q1 value and then brings it back up. Uh, you know, with the uh, that change in temperature too, because it anticipates it even before there's an error uh, from the set point. All right, so there is the final uh, the final plot, and uh, we can also see the integral absolute error or the sum of uh, the deviation, absolute value of the deviation. Um, from the set point and you can see here it's 1037 or almost double what we predicted and I believe that might be because of the measurement noise um, and also it just took a little bit longer to get up to the set point so there's a lot more air in this region but the overshoot is about the same uh, maybe just a little bit of undershoot on that second cycle and then it's fairly stable for most of it. All right, let me give you an overview of where we're going next with this. We have, um, this was the feed forward right here. I'm gonna go back up to the schedule and just take a look at this. If you come down, you see, uh, you know, we're right here on PID with feed forward. Our next one is going to be heater actuator. We're gonna be talking about actuators and sensors and do a little study just to be able to predict uh, what the other heater is going to do.